It's time to imagine better health with CHI Health October, dedicated to breast cancer awareness. Seeing pink everywhere might remind you to get a mammogram. The test is the gold standard when it comes to detection. And Dr. Greg Drabeck is a CHI Health general surgeon. Good to see you, doctor. It's nice Thank to you meet for you. having me. Stopping by. You know, with all this attention, more awareness around breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I know the women in my family take this very seriously as awareness has grown too. Uh, so let's talk about uh, early detection um, and, and exams. At what age should women start looking at these exams? You know, it's interesting to talk about that because it's still somewhat controversial, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, most everybody would agree that at least by the age of 50, if not by the age of 40, people should start having their mammograms. And if you are at particularly increased risk, bad family history mm -hmm. or genetics, you should start even earlier. Mm -hmm. There are a few different types of mammograms available today. And the standard screening mammogram is still the 2D, uh, two-view two mammogram that's mm -hmm. very effective in identifying early breast cancers, but in patients who are at increased risk or have difficult to examine breasts, there's the new 3D mammogram mm -hmm. that works yeah. very well. And, and you, you and brought the, that in here. This is the machine right here that takes those pictures, right? Indeed. And then you brought a 3D image along uh, that we'll take a look at here in a second. Do we, um, have, do we have that? I don't know if we, we do. Sorry, oh, we don't have that. I lied. Well, uh, many, well, many women are reluctant, though, as I, I look at this equipment, you know, for, for women who've either had a mammogram or they haven't and they've heard stories. I mean, what do you hear as a, as a physician that, that these women come in and they say, I haven't done it before because? Uh, there's a lot of fear about what they're going to find mm -hmm. in the mammogram. And so people will sometimes avoid going in for their mammogram just out of the fear that I really don't want to know what it shows. Yeah. And, and the fear is oftentimes because they're afraid of the treatments. And, and if I can bring anything out today that would be of help to people to assuage their fears in coming in, it's that the treatment today is so much less difficult and so much uh, less invasive. We have better surgeries, better chemotherapies, better radiation treatments. And in some cases, women don't need to have any or all of those treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that breast cancer is very early and we can do very minimal procedures and less disfiguring things for mm -hmm. women. Yeah, non-surgical options, right? There are some non-surgical options for removing benign breast tumors. And on occasion, if we find a malignant tumor, there are treatments that um, can help to cure that cancer short of surgery. Mm -hmm. um, the vast majority of breast cancers are still treated with surgery. When I was trained many, many years ago, uh, the controversy was whether or not mastectomy was the right thing to do mm -hmm. and whether we can treat people with less surgery, breast conserving surgeries. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we've even gotten to the point where breast conserving surgeries is considered somewhat the standard of care and now we're doing less and less to remove lymph mm -hmm. nodes, to do uh, less and less surgeries that are potentially causing side effects for mm -hmm. patients and long-term disabilities. That's not just a physical issue for patients. That's very much an emotional subject, isn't it? Breast cancer is a very emotional topic. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as a result, we try to make certain that all women are cared for in an expeditious, efficient process. As soon as they have an abnormal mammogram, they're in the system. Mm -hmm. But there are things that women can do um, earlier than that uh, to reduce the risks of getting breast cancer. Uh, and we've listed some of them here. Uh, and it seems uh, somewhat obvious, but uh, give up smoking is the, the first one. Yeah, it, in the last few years, we've recognized that smoking is a significant risk factor for a number of health mm -hmm. issues. And we now recognize that many cancers, not just lung cancer, are associated with, uh, with smoking. And breast cancer is certainly one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, we're eating a balanced diet, maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly. You recommend all of that in terms of pre prevention. Are those also important then after a diagnosis as women uh, want to give it their best fight? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we understand that women who are overweight carry a higher risk of breast cancer mm -hmm. than those that aren't. And women who exercise regularly and keep healthy during their treatments obviously mm -hmm. do better when they, when they undergo their treatments. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you brought in this copy of Time Magazine. You said you haven't had a chance to read it, but it just goes to show yeah, uh, right on the front on the page cover. here um, is dedicated to um, awareness. Yeah, well, this question, what if I decide to, to just do nothing? If a patient says that to you, what do you say to them? It's, it's, it's becoming a much more common question mm -hmm. because people look at the treatments that we have and, um, and arguably consider them to be so um, onerous that, that it's difficult to contemplate going through those and they wonder is there something less that I can do. Mm -hmm. Most of the treatment uh, 
research for breast cancers has been focused on women who have advanced tumors that need chemotherapy and radiation to save their lives. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is the more we do of these types of mammograms mm -hmm. and finding these breast cancers at their smallest, earliest stages, and sometimes at very less aggressive tumors, the question really has become, and the shift of research has started to focus on, what do we do with women who we never used to find these tumors in? Mm -hmm. They're so small and so unassuming that maybe there's something even less that we do today that we might be able to offer women in the future. And, you, and when you talk about mammograms, you said 50 is the age that you should definitely get in there. Some women, for it's 40. Mm -hmm. And then earlier, for those that have a history uh, in their family, are you seeing more women, though, um, come in for mammograms prior to the age of 40? We are, um, and it's particularly women who are, are very in tune with their family history. Mm -hmm. So if you have a first degree relative, your mother, your sister, second degree relatives like grandmas, aunts, cousins mm -hmm. who have had breast cancers, particularly men who have had breast cancers, and let's not forget that men can get breast cancer. Um, but if you have any of that in your family history, then the genetic um, process of, of developing mm -hmm. cancer can certainly come into play mm -hmm. and so women are encouraged that if they have a family history to get in much earlier. But it's all about mammograms, right? As you said, there's this controversy the last few years about what's, you know, at what age. When you have the ability to take control of your health and there is a test that can tell you um, whether you're doing okay or there's something serious at play um, to get that test and then to be able to beat cancer because you got it early. It's, it's so important, and I know at CHI Health, um, you're, you're right there with patients every step of the way. Online at chihealth.com slash general dash surgery. If you have any questions, um, you're welcome to call, but we really appreciate you coming in this October to talk to us about it and hopefully get it on the minds of our viewers so they can take good care of themselves. It's been my great good pleasure. Go pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks for your time Thank this you. morning. Thank you.